Hello, welcome to another episode of Garden's Table with Rose and I am Rose. So today I am outside and uh, we had a storm uh, last night. It's been raining all morning. So I'm out here, it's about 10 o'clock and I'm just doing my daily walks around. I thought I would film it because I haven't done a front yard tour. So every morning, <laughs> usually before work, uh, so usually about 6.37, I come out and I walk through my garden just to make sure nothing has been disrupted or there's not anything I need to take care of. So it's uh, yeah, usually a quick little process. So this is my little rock garden. <laughs> and look at that, the sedum is doing so well here. I am really happy with the fact that it's taken, it's rooted, it's taken out. Some of the hens and chicks are growing that I just put in this season, but that sedum is, this is the second year. So yeah, that's all rocks with a little bit of dirt on top and some mulch. And uh, so it was hard to get anything to really grow there. And then over here on the porch, let's see. Oh, my topiaries have gotten bigger. This one has a little browning in the center there. So I don't know what that's about. I just turned it. That side was actually facing the back. So it wasn't, it was getting the least amount of sun. So we'll see what happens with that. These uh, spirea are almost completely cleaned off by the bees. They're not here now because it just stopped raining. So that's why I'm doing this right quick. But usually they're swarming here over these spirea. Um, and they were pink, like a bright pink. And now they're turning a little bit darker. And then my carrots are still growing. <laughs> I don't see anything really that's usable in terms of the roots yet, but the carrots are still growing. And then uh, my uh, lavender topiary bounced back. It's nice and lush and green. Uh, the little mini cypress is doing well. I'll take both of those inside for the winter. These petunias have taken over these two pots on the porch. I had put some seeds in for some different annuals, but the petunias, I think, pushed them out, or they, they were growing very slow. There were some seedlings in, but growing very slow. Still having trouble with these window boxes. Um, I'm not going to go all the way over there, but I have a hard time getting anything really to flourish in these things. Um, and I don't know why I water them enough, plus they have a water basin in the bottom. And... Uh, one is in full sun, the other one is in shade. Uh, so I have now put um, sedum mostly. I put some petunias, some of the petunias because I had extras. But it's mostly sedum that I've added. And I'm going to try to um, just put all sedum in those because the ones in the back, my window boxes on the shed, they do really well with the sedum. And they're shallow, they're, they're dry all the time. <laughs> they don't get water very often. So maybe I can get that to grow. I want something green there. Uh, my hydrangea tree is actually grown upright, if you recall. <laughs> this was one twig that was laying on the ground at the beginning of the season. And I tied that one twig up. And so it's grown mostly upright. Looks like I need to maybe tie the top of this one to the stick. But, um, and it's got new growth and all of those stems are upright. So I am so happy about that because... I like I would like to have this this is gonna be a pretty large hydrangea I think maybe six feet somewhere four to six feet so I'd like to have that there it's the only thing really in front of the house um, these are the little anemones and ranunculus corms that I planted and I planted a lot of them but I didn't pre sprout them first and uh, only a few came up I must have planted 150 between the two uh, but look at these ranunculus. I decided I wasn't going to use them for cut flowers. Oh, that's so pretty. Primarily because they're they're short. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're they're about a foot tall, and that's really not long enough for a bouquet. You want something that's at least two feet tall, three feet tall. Um, so I just left them here for some color. I think there was something eating the tops of them. I found some that were decapitated, perhaps a bunny. I also have uh, a couple of the mums that are supposed to be perennial cutting mums um, dotted in here too. So hopefully I'll get something in the fall. And then over here, everything's just like green and lush, man. <laughs> the, 
Even my little evergreens in the pots are doing good. This hydrangea over here, which I believe is another tree, PG hydrangea. Um, it's growing. Yeah, we had uh, high winds, actually. I came out to check on one of my, my little Rosa Sharon tree because it looks like it may the wind may have tipped it over. I need to stake it. Um, but yeah, the high winds, see that this big branch at the neighbor's house, shoot. That came down last night, but okay. So that's my forsythia. Look how big and beautiful it is looking. I love it. Um, <laughs> this is a red twig dogwood. The Sky Pencil Holly is putting on some height. Those are in very tiny three inch pots when I got them a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years they've been out here. Uh, what else I got? Those rose, uh, I can't, something king, sun king aurelias, that bright yellow. Um, there's three of them. There's one hiding in the back, but those are big and lush. They're doing great. I uh, pruned all my trees, which I do after the summer solstice or around it, so the end of June, sometimes the beginning of July. I haven't pruned the ones in the back. I haven't got to that, but I pruned all the ones in the front, which means bringing them down to the size I want to keep them at, which is six feet about so interspersed in, in in this bed is a lot of snapdragons um, that I had extras and I planted them out here and I'm glad I did because they added pops of color um, way over there oh, in front of that in front of that uh, I can't even think of the name of it. it's like a Burberry but it's not <laughs> there's some of the uh, some of the some of the snapdragons you see the pink and the orange if you can see the pink and the orange in there but I had to stake up this daisy plant because it's like super tall and uh, and I trimmed it some of the branching off because it was big and it was covering up my poor little hydrangea here look at this look at this hydrangea I mean that is so pretty that looks like some kind of oak leaf hydrangea that's all i can tell you right now um, but it has beautiful panicles and it's getting big so i'm very happy with that uh, the white cone flower is growing at least that one is so i'm very happy with that the salvias and all of that russian sage that i put up here um, it all seems to be growing and gaining in color these spiky things, I cannot tell you what they are. They remind me of Liatris, that monkey grass stuff that I don't really like. I don't know why I have them here. I don't remember them here last year. Maybe I just planted them in the fall. Don't know. <laughs> There's two hydrangeas in here. And again, uh, I do not know why I planted these so close together. Uh, <laughs> but they must be ones that are supposed to stay small. That's all I can think of. There's one there and there's one there. Um, one of those is a moon rock. So that one over there is some kind of oak leaf. That's a moon rock, I believe. This is a puffer fish, which is a newer one. And this is a puffer fish in here. So this is my Rosa Sharon tree, which I think I'm gonna have to stake. It looks like it's leaning sideways after the windstorm. Um, let's see. Hookahs and coral bells, those are out doing well over here. Oh, the elephant ear has finally started to come up. I planted three giant elephant ear bulbs not too long ago, a couple of months ago, um, and they're starting to come up. Now those are not hardy to my zone, so I will try to dig them up if I can and store them because it's a huge leaf. I mean, it could get, could get like six feet tall. I don't know that it will here, but it can. Uh, what else I got going on? Over there is a hydrangea. That is, I believe, an Annabelle old school and the blooms are huge they're bigger than my hand this is a high sap anise i believe um i have a lot of buporum sprinkled in here too there were plugs that i had extras and so i was putting them in different places let me go around this interior of my yard <laughs> maybe this will be easier butterfly bush over there is getting bigger that's supposed to be a yellow one i did plant i went to the nursery and i got some delphiniums big tall ones or foxgloves um, and foxgloves and uh, those are probably take a couple of years before I see anything any bloom stalks or anything I'm thinking um, but the shrubs are all doing well that's one of those beauty berries that has the purple berries and my two uh, little lime hydrangeas which I'm 
trimming up because I just want them basically to kind of be a standard or kind of a tree form but with three stalks. So I'm keeping three stems and then letting it branch at the top. And so the goal, yeah, is to have the bottom of it clear of leaves and it look more like a ball or a tree, I should say. A more like a wine glass probably or goblet shape. These I've trimmed back. Um, the sweet autumn clematis grows like crazy everywhere. So I've trimmed that. That's going to be really pretty when it flowers. It's all white flowers. And closer to the fall. And then everything over here seems to be doing okay. A bunch of blue plum over here is getting taller. Which I use that for cut flower arrangements. Um, I'm just trying to hit on the highlights. Because I, I know nobody wants to see a hour and a half video. And here I have some little mini rose bushes. There's a yellow rose in there, which hopefully I won't have to move. I don't know why I put it over there. It's kind of crowded. Lots of pink snap dragons. Look at that. I didn't even plan that, but for some reason, as I was planning my extra snap dragons, because I just planted a bunch of varieties in, in trays and I did not label them because it didn't, it didn't matter to me what colors, because I was going to use them in the cup flower patch. Um, but I happen to have planted all like the burgundies and pinks over in here, which is what the majority of this is. Pinks, burgundies, or purple. So it was perfect. <laughs> I'll walk around the other side soon to show you. But all the roses are all doing well. This pink one, I don't know the name of this pink one actually, but it's a big bloom. You can see my hand there, it's big. Um, and then I have hydrangeas in here. These are wee whites that have bloomed out already and now they're turning like a pink. That's a pretty color. It's like a dusty rose. So, and then I have a number of them that are leafed out. I have a Gatsby gal and a Gatsby, no, a Gatsby star and a Gatsby moon over here. This is one of the two, but that thing is huge. That is bigger than my hand. So that's an oak leaf and that one has one, <laughs> one panicle on it. Roses, roses. I've deadheaded the roses regularly so they can keep blooming. Oh, those, those, that red rose over there is huge. That thing is bigger than my hand. This one is a little bit smaller. I think this one is the Mr. Lincoln. That one might be Dolly Parton. I'm not quite sure. There's another hydrangea in there. It's either the Gatsby Moon or the Gatsby Star. More Bupurum. And the front here is all this Lysianthus that takes a slow, slow, sweet time. And then my uh, Julia Child Rose has bloomed. I don't know if I showed this last time, but let me show it to you. I love it. I love yellow roses. But anyway, it starts out dark. It starts out dark, more like a golden color. And then it gets lighter as it gets older. Isn't that cool? So that's Julia Child. And then over there is Henry Fonda. Now the Julia Child I just planted this year. The Henry Fonda, this is the second year. And look how tall it is. It's beautiful, beautiful blooms on that one that lighten up as well um, as they get older. This white one, I can't remember what it was called. White, white magic, maybe. It's tall, but it didn't have a lot. Of, this one didn't have a lot of blooms on it. And then, oh, the lilies. I wanted you guys to see the lilies because they're starting to open. So I came to see what was knocked down. It looks like this lamb's ear is on the ground. That one's gonna have to be divided because it's um, it's huge <laughs> and it's laying, it's laying down right now. But let's see, the Astilbe is doing well. This Daisy is upright. I didn't even have to tie this one, which is nice. This is another huge lamb's ear, which uh, needs to be divided too. The stalks are laying down. Now some of the anemones came up here and those are taller actually than the other ones. It must like the that the ground here must probably has more compost. I know it has more compost, so it's probably a little bit softer for them to push through, I guess. I don't know, or more nutrients, maybe both. But uh, yeah, and then the roses, all the drift roses. This is a moon rock hydrangea. Oh, I love the moon rock hydrangea. I have several of them, but they have such sturdy stems. And as I recall, I may have even gotten a bloom like the first year I put one of them in. Um, definitely, I like those. Uh, this nine bark I really like. I think this is called black, maybe black panther or something like that. 
but it's dark, dark stems, dark leaves. That is just beautiful, and the stems are very, very strong. Oh, I missed a lily. Show you one of the lilies. They're all uh, the same, I believe, that I planted here. Now, this was supposed to be my moon garden, so they're all like the white, primarily cream, off-white, with a little bit of pink tinge on the outside of the leaves, which is, is very nice over here. They're very tall. These things are almost as tall as me. Like, they're, <laughs> they're three to five feet tall, all of them. Um, but yeah, beautiful. Look at that. They're going all the way down. And then here, I've cut back the yarrow. There was, as you, from the last video, clumps of yarrow. Nice white yarrow. I cut it back because the blooms were getting old and it'll probably give me a second flush before the year's done. I got a random couple of fever fuse in here that I was growing for cut flowers. I might not cut on this. I think, I don't know if this is a perennial or annual. If it's an annual, I'll have to cut it. If this is a perennial, I'd like to leave it there and let it get a little bigger before I started cutting on it. Um, the pansies and petunias have overtaken <laughs> the boxwood. There's a boxwood ball in there. It's overtaken them. So this pink yarrow, I really like. It's a, I didn't, I didn't intentionally plant this color here, but it's kind of a dusty rose and it's good in cut flowers. Actually, yarrow is pretty good in cut flowers to, in general. And it's good dried. It maintains a good color. So I'm drying a bunch of it. Because I had a bunch of yellow on the other side that I had to trim that back. It was getting huge and falling over. This is an Invincible Sublime Hydrangea here. And it has the daintiest little blooms. Um, they're more like a mop head than a panicle. And they're tiny. Um, these are spent. So I need to come out and deadhead these. And here's another lovely little lily. It's raining again. So I'm going to wrap this up. My apple trees. Oh. Let's go back. I do have some apples on one of my trees. Hopefully some of them remain edible. <laughs> you never know with the insects. Man, I, I do do my spraying regimen, but they still, those insects are relentless. They sting to get your stuff no matter what you do. Unless you like put it, covered it up. But yeah, those lilies are absolutely stunning. And here's more of this. I don't know what this is, Leatris maybe something like that but it hopefully is white um it <laughs> should be white let me go here along the outside oh uh, this peach rose needs to be deadheaded as well has some spent blooms this i believe is another peachy hydrangea maybe here on the corner and there's bugleweed down in there being swallowed up but Look at those snapdragons. I mean, don't they just go perfectly here? I mean, the, the burgundy ones are there. But, uh, yeah, these are nice. I don't even know what variety this is, but the bottom is like pale, or pale, pale pink. And it gets darker as it gets up. Look at that. Those are beautiful. Whatever kind that is, I'm going to go look through my seed supply, figure it out so that I can grow that one next year. <laughs> All of my uh, chrysanthemums or cutting mums are planted along this strip and they are growing. Uh, this was a snowball viburnum that's bloomed very early. And I got some pink is still be in there and bunches of these, uh, they might be knockout roses or mini roses or something like that, but they're spreading, they're huge. And then um, I got some burgundy snapdragons, a lot of blue plum over here, some high sap anise it looks like. Um, and then some more spiky, myatris looking things. Uh, I moved the carnations from the window box down here because they were dying in the window boxes. And let's see, two of the four have survived. There's one there. And next to that is a sedum. I can't tell you which kind, but these, the little pink next to it is a, is a sedum. There's the carnation. One of them over there. So I like that little, little pop of pink there. It's cute. And like I said, I pruned all the trees. These are nut trees. Uh, let me tell you what these are. These are these two trees right here are all-in-one almond trees. They are dwarf almond tree version. The next two nut trees are chestnut trees. So there's one here, and on the other side of the gate, there's another one over there next to those daisies. Okay. Now there's two oak leaf hydrangeas. 
back here there's one there and there's one there and I both I believe they're both Gatsby something Gatsby gal and Gatsby something else I cannot recall but they're oak leaves and they get really tall so I put them there to kind of frame this arbor was my goal on the daisies and yarrow that I transplanted up here is doing great that stuff that stuff is a is a very good plant for low maintenance um, it's hard to kill it off it spreads easily I mean if you just want to set it and forget it garden <laughs> plant some daisies and some yarrow um, yeah it's prolific so the butterfly bushes seem to be coming into their own starting to take root I've uh, deadheaded some of them those little bushes over there are Rose Creek abilias. I have one there and one on this other side it's raining lightly um, and then starts the uh, apricot trees. One's an apricot and one's a nectocot next to it. Um, and they're all leafed out and I don't know if they're gonna flower next or if it's uh, not gonna come until next year. No idea, but it has little, what looks like the beginnings of little buds maybe there. I don't know, I've never seen it flower yet. But anywho, <laughs> this Rose Creek abelia is growing much faster than the other one. I do not know why but it was happy when I planted it up here the other one was not so happy but it looks like it's bouncing back uh, this one has one panicle look at that first panicle I've ever seen on these up here so that's exciting 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 <laughs> a butterfly bush I trimmed all the tops off of that one and then I got like you know salvias in here as well stuff that's drought tolerant I tried to put up here in the front um, that is a butterfly bush these are my persimmon trees I've never seen them flower either but I like these trees because the bugs don't really bother them it has this smooth glossy kind of leaf almost like wax on it or something and they don't seem to bother those at all so I'm very happy about that um, white salvia more yarrow ornamental oregano I have two of those there's one there and a daisy and there's one there and this this is a Kwanzaa cherry tree and I'm gonna let that get as tall as it wants to because it's not interfering with anything it's like at the end of my yard it's not close to the house and it will be a good screen so that one I'm going to let's grow I've never pruned it other than maybe some suckers or something at the bottom which I looks like I need to do again but I'm gonna let that one get as tall as it wants to get and then I have a bunch of roses down this strip um, and a bunch of other perennial shrubs that many, most of them I planted because I could use them for cut flower uh, bouquets. But uh, there's another white salvia in there. There's a rose bush that's leafing out. I got some uh, maybe Russian sage or some kind of salvia, uh, these little clumps. I have uh, the clematis. There are two white ones, I can't think of the name. But there, there's another nine birth that I've had. This is the second year, but it grows so slow. But it's another dark one, and I'm really looking forward to using that foliage. Um, I got some also oh easy roses in here that are pretty much done blooming. I don't deadhead the also oh easies or the drift ones much because the blooms are so small and it's so condensed. Um, and I think there are ones you don't have to necessarily deadhead. So I just kind of leave those alone because that would be too tedious to try to, you know, it has multiple, it'll have multiple bugs on each end. So you're trying to trim out one because the other two are still, you know, budded up. So I just don't really mess with it. This thing, oh my God, look at this. This is the Annabella hydrangea and this thing is as big as my head. Now this is two blooms <laughs> that have grown, wait, no. This is one bloom here but it has like multiple mini, mini stems coming from it to make up this whole thing. That is huge. And there's a bunch of bunch of blooms. I did have to stake this one. It is floppy, the Annabelle. I think it's an old school one. This uh, high Sopanese has gotten ginormous. Um, that's a perennial because I did not plant that. There's a lot more of the pink snapdragons in here in the midst of this, which is beautiful. This is some type of hydrangea. I'm not sure which one. And here is my, uh, oh, this tree, this cotton candy maple. It is beautiful. Look at the variegation on those leaves. Some are even like all pink. I mean, it is just stunning. There's another 
regular Japanese maple down in there, which isn't growing very fast, so I'm a little concerned. I don't want to lose that one. But yeah, beautiful. I'm going to also let this maple get as tall as it wants to as well because, again, it's, it's not close to my house. It's not going to bother anything by being tall and in this spot. Um, and I don't need to harvest anything off of it. Oh, my trees. Okay, so I think deer were coming over here eating on my stuff right on my fruit <laughs> trees even though i live in a subdivision i think you know it's all let's see, it's all wooded back there so i think they're coming over here chewing on stuff because my apple tree looked all chewed on so what i did let me go over here to the apple tree i came out and put chicken wire around all of them i don't care that it doesn't look the most physically appealing actually from the street you can't see the chicken wire because it's thin and it just kind of vanishes but yeah, I put chicken wire around all of them and they have some nice new growth and I fertilized them because they were looking raggedy as heck. Look at this. Look at how many leaves. I mean, it's like the, the deer were eating them or something. Yeah, so I did that for all four here that are exposed. There are, I think there's a pear and two or three apples, something like that there. They're pear and apple trees. So I did that to all of them. And then these ones, so I wasn't gonna wrap these. These are big and they're in the, in the beds. So really the deer probably would only get to this side. So what I did was a friend told me about Irish spring soap, allegedly. <laughs> it's there's beer, deer and bunnies and all of that stuff because they don't like the scent. So I put my little mesh bass that you can cover up fruit with um, to protect it and flowers. I put pieces of the Irish spring original scent in there and I hung them, tied them to the trees to try to protect my stuff my food my fruit look at that i have peaches several peaches on this tree i'm so excited i hope i actually get to eat them so like i said over here i can tell you the name of everything you do know the rose bushes obviously because they have thorns i can tell you the varieties there's tags on all of them but uh there are just a bunch of different shrubs i can tell you the names of the shrubs either but from spirea to uh what else did i get did i get another nine bark i'm not sure but i got several perennial shrubs that can be used for cut flowers and they're all planted um, in this new section that I dug up here along with the roses oh my god look at this is this a rose of Sharon can't be looks like a rose of Sharon this might be the proven winner's blue one I can't think of the name of the variety but man those flowers are pretty oh, I can't believe it's blooming I mean that hasn't been planted there that long maybe um not even a month <laughs> and it wasn't that big it may have been three gallons a three gallon container but wow so everything over here is growing this is a shade area um there's a bunch of euphorbia in the midst of this uh, and ladies mantle is in there hellebores my hellebores are still budding up and here we are it's almost july <laughs> they're a cold weather flower but maybe it's because of the shade over here I'm guessing. Oh, there's some variegated hydrangeas in here too that I had thought had died because they completely, um, they looked sickly and had died back to the ground. So I thought they were goners, but they've come back. So I'm very excited. It's a variegated hydrangea. I couldn't tell you any more about the, the variety than that, but yeah. And then there's lots of coral bells in here, hookahs, ferns. There's some ferns in here because this whole area stays shaded for most of the day. So I put all the shade stuff back here and then halfway through, it gets to be full sun or part to full sun. Um, and that's all because of this big maple tree here. <laughs> so that's what's going on here. At some point, I'm gonna have that tree. That is my tree, unfortunately. At some point, I'm gonna have it cut down, but that's on my project list, big project list. But that is what's going on in the front. Let's see, I managed to do that in under 30 minutes. So I'm proud of myself because usually it takes me a very long time to do these because I want to stop and talk about everything. So we've had a drought. It just started raining yesterday for the first time in like weeks. So. You know, I water the lawn, this this section, this intersection, anyway, but um, yeah, everything around here was like hay. And I do have some evergreens over here. I have just a little 
cheap standard I don't even know what that one's called that um, you can get from any big box store seasonally and then I do have a Bosnian pine in here with this uh, high Sopanese covering which I'm, that's that's a beautiful tree I can't wait till that gets taller I'm gonna let that get as tall as it wants to I can't wait to see that in the winter time um, you know when it gets cold and all this green green annual type of green stuff goes away that's just gonna be beautiful all right did I leave out anything nope I do think I did all right I am done and uh, thank you for joining me and I'll talk to you next time bye bye